In Search of Hanley by Anne Wismer and Sean Reagan. We should not have been surprised that Mrs. Ewison had confused us with the twosome from the X-Files, Dane and Fox. We are not, we are both quite certain, investigators of the paranormal. We are writers on assignment for the round table about the paranormal oftentimes, it seems, but there is a marked difference and Mrs. Jewison had drawn the connect nonetheless. She had invited the two of us over to the old boarding house on the same Friday night, asked us to pack for overnight stay, and even given us the same master bedroom to share as Dane and Fox would have shared. The bedroom was adjacent to, Han to Hanley's, although there was no connecting door. Before retiring to our overnight quarters, we spent time in the son's room, impressed by the array of trophies, pennants, athletic mementos, and by the framed photo of his handsome face and intense, intelligent eyes. Our attention back in our own bedroom then became wrapped, indeed by counting the creaks and the cracks of the old house itself. Our last stop was after three to the upstairs storage room from which Hanley had fallen, not leaped to his death. Flashlight steady. Steady in hand, we found the telltale spot on the window frame he had been forced to push to open that the local police, professional police investigators had found. At breakfast in Mrs. Ewison's huge dining room, we were able to assure the woman what the local law had assured her, that Hanley had not leaped to his death by suicide. We had, in summary, done such an upstanding job as paranormal investigators that neither of us had noticed that it had been the first time we had spent the night in the same bed. The huge canopy bed, pillows propped against headboard, and toes not touching underneath the billowy feather down blankets. Now that, that was carrying things far, too far, too far. <laughs>